What's going on YouTube? Snowflake Zemo is here today with another deck profile. It is my Trap Monster deck here on Master Duel. Trap Monsters are cards that I think are pretty cool. They're continuous trap cards that uh, have an effect that basically summons them out as a monster. And, uh, you know, there's some really neat ones like Statue of Anguish Pattern that pops a lot of cards. Uh, Angel Statue, which has the Thunder King Ryo negate special summon type effect. And uh, just a lot of interesting things you can do with them, particularly with these ones that allow you to summon monsters of a declared type or attribute, allowing us to make both uh, either Evolzor XZs, or if we got plants, make a plant and then lock our opponent out of special summoning monsters. All very, very nasty stuff. Um, with that said, let's get into the cards. Starting off with our monsters, I am playing two copies of the Calculator, a level 2 monster that the attack of this card is the combined level of all face-up monsters you control times 300. Um, it's really easy to get a lot of stars on the field in this deck because certain monsters, like Statue of English Pattern, is a 7-star monster, uh, Abyss Stungray is a 5-star monster, and we can just kind of flip all these and summon them out on one turn, which is pretty nice. So the Calculator is a good finisher to have because then we can just normal summon the Calculator while we have all these trap monsters on the field. And he can have incredibly high attack to just get a lot of damage in, which is pretty nice. Next, I'm playing three copies of Cactus Bouncer. Super powerful card in this deck. It can't be special summoned, but while another plant monster is on the field, neither player can special summon monsters. So it's got 1800 attack. And of course, our three copies of Swamp Mirror and Quantum Cat allow us to uh, declare their type when we summon them. So if we have Cactus Bouncer, we can just make these cards a plant type, and boom, our opponent is locked out of special summoning. Uh, the only thing to note is we're also locked out of special summoning, so we want to make sure we summon as much as we can before Swamp Mirror hits the field. So just make sure if you're going to chain a bunch of trap monsters to get the lock uh, that we want Swamp Mirror as Chain Link 1. And last for monsters, I'm playing three copies of Soul Eating Aviraptor. If this card's normal or special summon, take a dinosaur type monster from the deck and either add it to the hand or send it to the graveyard, which is nice. We can add another Soul Eating Aviraptor to search next turn or just send it to the grave if we, uh, you know, want to get it out of our deck. But it gives us a level four dinosaur type monster that can summon, that can search us another copy of itself. And of course, combining it with Swamp Mirror or Quantum Cat, if we declare dinosaur type, allows us to make Evolzor Lagia or Evolzor Dolka, really powerful Xyz monsters. Um, it, you know, the other effects of Soul Eating Aviraptor don't matter too much in this deck because uh, we're not really going to be using it. So it's just a level four dinosaur type monster with a decent attack that searches another copy of itself. And that's it for the monsters. Next, going into our spell cards, I'm playing two copies of Card of Demise. Card of Demise is great. This is a very trap card heavy deck. And uh, we can certainly make use of this. Draw until we have three cards in our hand. Also, for the rest of this turn, our opponent takes no damage. And during the end phase, we have to send our entire hand to the graveyard. You can only activate this once per turn, and you can't special summon during the turn you activate this. Uh, on our turn, a lot of what we're doing is just setting more trap monsters so that we can special summon on our opponent's turn. And we have a very low monster count, so we can very much low, uh, you know, play a monster, set our back row, play Demise, draw more back rows, set that back row, boom. Very nice. We like that. Um, and of course, next up, we're playing two copies of Pot of Duality. Look at the top three cards of our deck. Add one to our hand. Shuffle the rest back in. Can't special summon. So, uh, you know, just like Card of Demise, no big deal. We can use this to search our very powerful Summon Limit Floodgate, our Imperial Custom if we need a way to protect our trap monsters, or maybe a trap monster that we're missing, like Azure Rune or Anguish Pattern, something that we'd like to see. Maybe Cactus Bouncer if we want to go for a Bouncer Lock. Whatever we're missing, we can get it. And last for spells, I'm playing two copies of Pot of Extravagance. At the start of main phase one, banish three to six random extra deck cards face down to draw one card for every three cards banished. Uh, that's pretty nice. We banish six, draw two. Uh, other than the Volzors, not a ton of extra deck stuff that we're actually making in this deck. Um, so, uh, you know, very glad to draw cards instead. And that's it for spells. Next, we're going into our trap cards. Starting off, I am playing one copy of Fake Trap. Fake Trap is a pretty interesting trap card that says you can only activate this when your opponent uses an effect of a spell, trap, or effect monster to destroy trap cards on the field. Destroy this card as a substitute for those trap cards. And if set cards would have been destroyed, uh, pick up and see the set cards, basically just to reveal that they're traps. So if we got our back row here and our opponent Harpy's Feather Dusters, Lightning Storms, we can destroy Fake Trap instead. Not bad. Next, I'm playing one copy of Cyber Shadow Garden, a pretty interesting trap monster. During your opponent's main phase, special summon this card as an effect monster. 
uh, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, the attack and defense of this card becomes the attack and defense of that monster. And once per turn during your opponent's end phase, set this card in spell and trap card zone. That last effect is really why we're playing this, because it's a trap monster that we can keep resummoning each turn to activate Statue of Anguish Pattern's ability to pop a card. And uh, that just makes it pretty nice. Next, three copies of Summon Limit, a good emergency button in this deck, but also plays really well with Statue of Anguish Pattern. Neither player can summon more than two times per turn. Uh, which is something we can definitely play around, especially because when we summon a trap monster, if we can have Anguish Pattern on the field, we can destroy cards our opponent controls, and that's pretty nice. They can summon a monster, we can destroy it with a trap monster, triggering Anguish Pattern, and then they summon a second monster, we can summon our second trap monster, destroying their monster with Anguish Pattern. Now they have an open board, perfect for summoning the calculator, getting a lot of damage in. So just a really handy card, and it also synergizes well with this next card, Imperial Custom, which we're playing three of. A continuous trap that says face up continuous traps cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects except imperial custom so this is nice it protects our summon limit but also protects all of our trap monsters because even while they are monsters they still are considered continuous trap cards so it means that your opponent can't just run over them by battle or raigeki them as if they were monsters uh, they're not going to get destroyed with imperial custom so definitely a card we want to see Next up, three copies of Tiki Curse, a four-star uh, rock trap monster, 1800 attack, has the great effect that while it's an effect monster, if another trap card that is a monster battles an opponent's monster after damage calculation, destroy that opponent's monster. So if opponent's monsters are too big, we can ram them and destroy it with this card's effect. Very nice to have. Next, plan three, Swamp Mirror. Uh, this trap monster becomes an 1800 attack four-star monster where we declare its type and attribute. So we can use that to either make, call it plant and lock special summoning out, or we can make dinosaur and uh, go into the Evolzors. Uh, likewise, Quantum Cat is pretty much the same thing, except instead of 1800 attack, it's got 2200 defense. So not offensive for sure. If uh, we need to use one for material, we definitely want to use Quantum Cat. But, uh, you know, that's not bad. If we make, if we call Dinosaur, we can make Evolzors. If we call Plant, we can use Cactus Bouncer to uh, cancel out Special Summoning. And just a good card to have. Next, three copies of Abyss Stung Raid. 1900 attack monster with five stars. And has the effect that if summoned by, you know, flip the trap card's effect that summons it as an effect monster, this card cannot be destroyed by battle, which is pretty cool. You can wall your opponent off with this uh, if you don't have Imperial Custom or whatnot yet. Um, next, three, Statue of Anguish Pattern. Special summon this card as an effect monster. It's a rock earth type, uh, zero attack, 2500 defense. If summoned this way, this card cannot be targeted by an opponent's card effect while you control another trap card that is a monster. A little bit nice there, targeting protection. And if a card is special summoned from your spell and trap card zone to the monster zone, while this card is a monster, you can target a card on the field and destroy it. What's nice about this effect is it's not a hard once per turn, so multiple trap monsters can get us multiple pops. And if we have multiple anguish pattern, each anguish pattern can pop a card. So that can get very nasty, destroy lots of cards quick, uh, and that combos well with summon limit. We can pretty much guarantee our opponent never has a board of monsters on our turn where we want to attack. Uh, can take care of back row, just take care of a lot of things, and seven stars means that having this on the field automatically gives the calculator a free 2100 attack, which on top of its two stars means it has 2700 attack, and uh, you know, that's pretty powerful. Any more monsters just add to the attack of the calculator. And last, we got three copies of Angel Statue Azurun. Uh, special summon this card as an effect monster, uh, Fairy, uh, 1800 attack, level 4. Once per turn, when your opponent would special summon a monster while this card is in your monster zone, you can send to the graveyard one continuous trap in your monster zone that was special summoned from the spell and trap card zone to negate the summon and if you do, destroy that card. Again, another card that works well with summon limit because uh, summon limit counts uh, negated summons uh, as long as it's not negated card effects that summon. Uh, so if you wait till they actually like link it to the monster, boom, it works with Azure Rune. And of course, all, in addition to that, when this card in the monster zone is destroyed by battle, you can destroy the monster that destroyed this card. So that's pretty cool. And uh, that makes up our main deck lineup. Next, taking a look at our extra deck, mainly the two monsters to talk about here are Evolzor Lagia, a uh, rank 4 XZ with 2400 attack, requires two level 4 dinosaur type monsters, which we can get with Avi Raptor in any combination of Swamp Mirror or Quantum Cat. 
When a monster would be normally special summoned, we can detach two materials from this card to negate the summon, and if we do, destroy it. Or, of course, it also can negate spell or trap cards being activated for two materials, so that's pretty nice. Just an Omni negate on a monster once is uh, perfectly fine by us. And, of course, the other one, Evolve Zordolka, two level four dinosaur type monsters. When another monster's effect is activated, you can detach a material from this to negate the activation, and if you do destroy that monster, so monster effect ne negation that is not once per turn, not even once per chain. This card gets two monster effect negations in it, and uh, that is incredibly powerful. And again, Swamp Mirror, Quantum Cat, Saluting Aviraptor, any combination of these can become Evolve Zordolka. For the rest of the deck, I just have a lot of generic rank 4 XZs that I have uh, in here, you know, Honor Arc. Uh, basically, whatever your best rank 4 XZs is kind of work, because there's a lot of level 4 XZs in this deck. I mean, level 4 monsters in this deck to go into rank 4 XZs. Um, not, you know, none of them are that good enough that I would craft extra ones, because uh, we're mostly going off the, you know, the back of summon limit, and oftentimes we want to keep our trap monsters on the field, but just keep that in mind when building the extra deck. So here's a replay to show the deck in action here. We are playing against our opponent who is playing Dark Magician. Uh, not necessarily a meta contender, but an ever so popular deck you will definitely still run into on Master Duel quite a bit. Um, looking at our starting hand here, Extravagance, Duality is nice, Summon Limits, good to see, especially with Anguish Pattern and Tiki Curse, because there's our two monsters we can summon, we can pop an opponent's monster, leaving our opponent with just pretty much one monster on the field for their turn, not bad. But, we didn't win the die roll, so our opponent is going first, they will start by setting two and playing Magician's Robe, so not the most powerful Dark Magician hand. But, Dark Magician, very back row heavy deck, I definitely gotta be scared about what those are in the back row. Uh, next, we'll draw Quantum Cat. Not a big deal here. We're going to play Extravagance here. Banished, uh, you know, a Dolka, a Dolka, a Lagia, but that means I still have two Lagia and one Dolka I can build. Uh, I am going to play Pot of Duality because I'm not special summoning any this turn. I'm uh, going to look at what I got. I'm going to get a Soul Eating Aviraptor here because I already have a full assortment of back row. Uh, I'm going to use Aviraptor here, and uh, they are, of course, going to use Magician's Robe to get out the dark magician i will clear the magician's robe get a little damage in and then set a bunch of cards here so what's nice is i'm going to right off the rip i'm going to summon azure rune in english pattern so i can pop a card and then of course azure rune can be on the field ready to negate a special summon so i'm going to try to get rid of this dark magician and i try to do that right off the rip because i don't want to get hit with dark magic attack because I don't have the back row protection right now. No, no fake trap, no Imperial custom. So I need to get these Dark Magicians off the field. They use Magician's Navigation to summon another one and Chronicle Magician. Chronicle Magician, of course, is going to give this card 5,000 attack. And, uh, you know, now we're in standby to main phase one. Uh, here they go. They're summoning, they're playing Magician's Rod. I'm going to, at this point, flip Quantum Cat because if they add Dark Magic attack, I need to pop this Dark Magician right away. Uh, so they add bond between teacher and student. Anguish Pattern is going to trigger, and I'm going to get rid of Dark Magician since it's big. Uh, now Chronicle Magician is going to destroy Azure Rune, but that's all right. Azure Rune's effect will pop Chronicle Magician, leaving our opponent on just one more back row. I can flip Swamp Mirror here, use Anguish Pattern, destroy that card. It's a bottomless, which uh, is fine. We'll trade it. So now, I got another Soul Eating Aviraptor here. I'm able to make Evolzor Lagia. And of course, Aviraptor can attack Magician's Rod. And then we got Anguish Pattern. We got So we got Lagia to now negate the board wipe. Uh, we got Summon Limit ready to stop the special summon spam. And we got two trap monsters that can give us two pops off Anguish Pattern. Very nice. So, of course, here's the top deck Lightning Storm, which is why we wanted to make Lagia. We did not want to have to mess with that. And uh, our opponent scoops, which is tends to be what happens at that point. Uh, so, there it goes. So, that is it for my Trap Monster deck profile. Uh, again, this is a deck I enjoy quite a bit. I really like the gimmick of these trap cards that become monsters. And I really like uh, utilizing Swamp Mirror and Quantum Cat to uh, make Evolzors or do the Plant Lock with Cactus Bouncer. Uh, that is just incredibly powerful stuff, and uh, yep, definitely a fun deck to play. Uh, love to know what you do with Trap Monsters if you've played them before. I appreciate y'all checking out the deck profile, and I'll catch you in the next one.